Hello, greetings, dear um, teachers and uh, non-teaching personnel of Holy Angel University. I would like to thank the administration for giving me this opportunity to be with you as we prepare to start a new, exciting, scary school year. I'm not going to deny the fact that this is not a very easy um, school year. This is not a normal one, while we always refer to this as the new normal, there is nothing normal about being locked down in our houses, about not being able to go to do our day, and as we always did, meeting our fellow teachers, meeting our fellow angelites, seeing all the students uh, all over campus, bringing to life uh, what otherwise would be a dull day. And so I would like to give you an encouragement. In fact, most of the time during this presentation, my objective is to be able to motivate you and encourage you in spite of the kind of challenges we know we are facing and despite the fact that uh, there are many new things that we will be doing. As you may have already seen these past weeks or months that we have been working from home, things are very different. And so I would like to spend especially a lot of time trying to encourage you and helping you see the brighter side of things because that's how it is. In any difficulties, in any challenge, there is always a bright side to things. So I'd like to start off by reviewing with you um, what we really want to be able to achieve as Angelite, teacher, non-teaching personnel. The first thing I'd like to do is really to say thank you. Thank you because you continue to believe. You continue to hope that things will be better in spite of what we see right now. Not just in Angeles, not just in Pampanga, not just in the Philippines, but all over the world. Thank you for keeping trust and holding on. You are in a school of character and this is why it is a great joy for me to be given this opportunity to talk to you about what we really want to do in Holy Angel University. As you know, you were given that uh, special privilege of being declared as a national school of character by no less than Dr. Thomas Licona, the um, president of Center for the Fourth and Fifth Arts based in the State University of New York. And um, using the 11 principles of CEP, Character Education Partnership, now known as character.org, based in Washington, D.C., you are the only university that managed to qualify meaning of all the universities in the whole of Asia, you're the only one who can claim to be truly a school of character. And this opportunity I was given to talk to you is just a clear proof of your being a school of character. And so I want to thank you because it is you, your work, your contribution, your example that has made Holy Angel University the school of character that it is. I am who I am. I am who I am. I am who I am. I am who I am because I had a great teacher. A great teacher is a work of art. A great teacher is a key to success. A great teacher can change your life. A great teacher changed my life. 
Linda Bodie, Hunter Frost. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Khan. I learned that I didn't need to be like everybody else. I learned that everything is possible. I learned not to sweat the small stuff. I learned that you can approach knowledge with a sense of wonder and fun. I didn't learn how to speak Spanish, even though she was my Spanish teacher, but I did learn how to be myself. Mr. Isaacson, it's been a long time, but thank you. I'm Minnie Darcy, Craig Smith. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hunter Frost. Mr. Glass, I thank you. Charlotte Pace, thank you. To each and every one of my teachers, thank you. Muchas gracias, Senora Flower. <laughs> Te amo. <laughs>
we read it in the Gospels. These words are for us now. Be not afraid. Be not afraid of technology. Be not afraid of canvas. <laughs> Be not afraid of having to reach out to your students and trying to continue making a difference in their life, even if we are now using a platform that is quite alien to some of us. And I would have to encourage you, there is nothing wrong with asking for help. For help from our colleagues, for help from our other teachers in the university who are more expert in the use of technology, in the use of this medium of reaching out to people uh, online. There's no manual that comes with it, but we have a lot of friends that we can count on. And there's nothing wrong with reaching out to ask for help. Again, I would have to remind you, the world needs teachers now more than ever. Now more than ever, they need us. And they need us not just to learn the subjects, to master the course, to pass a subject or a school year. But let me remind you that the young people not only need from us math, science, language, history, social studies, or whatever subject you're assigned to take care of this year. More than ever, they need answers to questions like, why do these things happen? When will this end? What will happen to our future? And what is next? Perhaps some of them are even beginning to ask, why are we here in this world? Why are we here in this life? More than ever, they need us to face the uncertainties, to make sense of all these difficulties, and how to move forward despite the situation. These, I think, are the more important concerns. Everyone who will enter your Zoom room, your Google Meet room, have in mind even before you start teaching them math, science, or English, it may be necessary to help them find answers to the more fundamental questions in life. In short, the strength of character to continue pursuing a goal despite the obstacles, that is what they are looking for, what everyone is looking for and we adults are the ones in a position to help them acquire this strength of character find the strength to go on that's why we say character more than ever at this time of the pandemic character more than ever at home now that they spend more time in the family, character more than ever. We cannot do away with the teachers, with you who work in the universities. We can even say now more than ever, you are important because you are the ones who can give them answers to those questions. Kung iisipin nyo, Lahat ng kanilang gustong pag-aralan, science, math, English, nasa internet na. Kaya na nilang i-download. But there's nowhere in the internet where they can download character, resilience, strength of the faith. What would life be like without teachers? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um... Um... Sorry, I, I'm gonna need... Yeah, yeah, take time. Um... <laughs> oh.
Ooh. Um. Oof. Life would. So um, life wouldn't be the same actually. Teachers are the people that tell us to move forward. To teach us education that's very important. Yeah, you could learn stuff from the streets, but you won't know what's right or wrong. There would not be a guide for success. It would just be us running around trying to find it. Probably be terrible because nobody would learn. I think life would be pretty bland because teachers are the ones that, you know, they teach us new things, they give us opportunities to um, find things out ourselves that we don't understand or un don't know yet. Nobody would be very smart, there would be a lot of world problems because people would not know what to do. I don't know how I would get through my day without teachers. They encourage me, like, all the time. <laughs> I couldn't imagine what, what it would be like without schools or teachers or any public education because we wouldn't learn anything. We'd making, we would be making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Public well, education provides, you know, it provides everybody with a chance, a fair shot, to get, to get what they need to succeed in life. I feel like life wouldn't be fair for people who may not have the best uh, deck of cards in life. I wouldn't know discipline, I wouldn't know responsibility, I wouldn't know how to think and how to critically think and how to be me. <laughs> I feel like there would be a decrease in a lot of dreamers as in they don't know what they want to do with their lives. Teachers, honestly, they're amazing people. They dedicate their lives to teaching and just loving and inspiring kids to be whatever they want to be. Without teachers, we'd lose our opportunities for leadership. Many people don't have someone at home that they can see as a leader, and teachers every day usually strive to become the leaders that are needed in our lives. I've had teachers who tell me to like chase my dreams, follow my dreams, find my passions and dig deep into them. And that definitely has affected me as a student. A life without teachers w would be meaningless to me because teachers have crafted me into the person that I am today. So I did not like school. I'll be honest with you, school was not for me. I skipped, I walked out, I tried to miss school each time. But um, there's some teachers that kind of make you come to school because it just brightens your day and makes it positive. So sometimes you really do. The only reason you come to school is just to see that teacher. Miss Bowling, my drill team director, has pushed me every day to do what I love and to be the person that I am today. Honestly, it's Miss Willems. Miss McCarty. Miss Waller, my 11th grade AP US history teacher. 7th and 8th grade English teacher, Miss Bradley. My favorite teacher is Miss Jerkins. Uh, his name is Mr. Staten. Ms. Cummins, she's the special education teacher. A teacher who motivates me a lot is Ms. Beal. My 10th grade chemistry teacher, Mr. Brian Dalek. Ms. Smith, she's a 9th grade biology teacher. Ms. Levino is my favorite teacher because she motivates me to do my best every day. She makes me laugh all day and she's just the best teacher of all times. She's super passionate and she loves her subject, but it's really just because her passion and her interest. Her passion for special needs kids has really pushed me to want to major in special education when I'm in college. In her class, um, she empowered us to question things, to explore the unknown. Miss Barth has changed my life because um, she's taught me how to be a better person. I can tell you're getting emotional. Is it because she's made a big impact on your life? Right now I want to give a thanks to Miss Payne because without her I couldn't decide what I was going to do with my life. Um, I want to thank her a lot because um, I'm going to be the first person from my whole family to go to college. And, I'm, and I set my mind and I'm going to do that goal. So I want to thank you Miss Payne. Through your example, you continue teaching the students not to give up, not to quit, to continue hoping, to continue trying. The fact that you will continue showing up online to handle that subject, you are teaching them the meaning of resilience, the meaning of strength of character, the meaning of fortitude. Through the example of your life, you are showing them what it means to stand up after a big trial like the pandemic. Now more than ever, character. And we have to keep that in mind as we go through this unique 
school year, this hopefully unique semester only. We hope that in a matter of one semester, we will be back inside the classroom going through our life of educating, teaching, according to what we have been trained to do. So, let's recap. The young people today need to learn from us resilience. They have to understand the meaning of toughness. They need to see in us integrity, hard work, and faith. I add faith there because let us face it, as we always say, this is an invisible enemy. We cannot see the enemy. But we've got to strive, we've got to do our best to forge ahead in spite of the trials, in spite of the difficulties. So, courage, forward. I want this, in fact, to be like your battle cry. Despite the difficulties, challenges, let's move forward. Here's the reality. While the university is doing its best to help everyone cope with this so-called new normal, while the school is providing all the necessary training, assistance, reteaching to everyone. For some, it is a very, very big challenge. And so, this is now the time for teamwork. This is now the time for those who are more expert in the use of technology to be of help, to serve, to think of how they can facilitate learning for the other teachers, for the other members of the community. This is what will help us get through to these challenging times when we work together. What I'd like to do now is to share some concrete tips for you, dear teachers, on how we can possibly face this new normal with a bit of more confidence for successful online teaching. Because after all, this is what we all want to be able to achieve. We chose to stay in teaching in spite of these new challenges and we want to be successful in it. Here's the first one I'd like to share with you. Record all your lectures. Assume that among your students, there will be some who will have difficulties connecting, who will not be able to connect at the time when you need them to. It's just the reality that we have in our country. And sometimes you just have to take the word of your students that they tried, they tried their best to connect, but there was problem with their internet connection at home. So, no problem. Record that lecture so that those who are not able to catch it live will be able to download it later or we will be able to go back to it because you have recorded it in practically all the platforms that you're going to use, there is that option of recording that lecture. Here's another one. Research says lecture videos that show the face of the instructor are more effective than simple narrated slideshows. And that's why I prefer to use Zoom in recording my lecture uh, because, well, my face continues to appear in the upper right side of the screen um, while at the same time showing my slides. Here's another tip. Keep your videos short. I know some of you have been asked to record your lectures that uh, the students can access at any time, but um, studies show that uh, videos longer than 15 minutes 
you will either have issues of downloading. The students will say that they had a hard time downloading your lecture or that uh, there is just so much distraction along the way. And so your lecture that uh, is, let's say, supposed to be one and a half hours long, try splitting it in 15 minute segments. And then even better if you can divide the segments into concrete parts or concrete topics related to the lesson. Here's another tip. Test out your slides. As you know, some of your students will try to access your lectures in smartphones, some others in their laptop, some others in tablet. Make sure that your slides have fonts that can easily be read, colors that do not disappear in the background, and the texts are readable even in small screens. Here's another tip. Use existing resources that are available already, professionally produced by experts online. No need to attempt to produce your own original one whole semester of high quality videos. Even these companies that make money producing these things have spent many hours putting all these materials together. Do not attempt you personally as one lecturer producing all for one whole semester. Explore all the available materials that are online because really some more experts than us have already produced worthy materials. I want to share with you, for example, some best ones that I found online. This one, 15 best online resources for teachers from TCK Publications. They are very rich in making available free materials for the teachers. Or this is another one from teacher.org. Teachers, tools, and resources, especially for online teaching. Here's another one from Future Learn. COVID-19, the best resources for online teaching during coronavirus. Or, if that one is only um, best 20, here it's talking about 350 plus amazing online learning resources. Or, there's another one, the 25 best websites for teachers from grades pre-K all the way to 12. In other words, you're not really alone in this. There are many all over the world who have already been trying to make life a bit easier for us. That's what Google is for. You Google it and you're going to find many, many available materials. And that's for whatever subject you're handling, whatever subject has been assigned to you. In other words, no need to reinvent the wheel. We are not exactly the pioneers in this. Even before the pandemic started, even before the lockdown, there were already many professionals that have been putting available online materials for teaching. And that is what we have to do to make technology work for us. That's why I go back to what I said earlier. Be not afraid. We may be afraid because of uncertainties, because of apprehensions. But as you forge ahead, you continue finding ways to be the best teachers you can possibly be, to be the best academicians you can possibly be, you realize we have the help of many good people and that's why at this point you are all very clear about the idea that technology is not bad after all it's not just all about TikTok and instagram and facebook and twitter technology 
can be in the service of uh, humanity. Here is one of the best websites I found for teachers looking for teaching tools. jamcampus.com slash best dash online dash teaching dash tools. Here you will find, for example, uh, they listed down 54 online teaching tools to make your life easier. And these are just some examples. And I was happy to see they even made available there parent-teacher communication tools. Now more than ever, we need to collaborate with the parents as they also hopefully have realized need to collaborate with you teachers. Now it's the parents who have to make sure the young people study, that they get to their books, that they do the work that has been given them, the load that has been entrusted to them. After all, they're the ones now who will have to quote unquote handle discipline. They're the ones now who will have to make sure that their children, their sons, their daughters actually work on their online assignments or their requirements. Well, it's very important that we are able to communicate directly with the parents as well. Or they also have various materials, websites that can make assessment and quizzes easier to handle. And then they also have websites that make available many teaching props and worksheets, which now that we will have to do things online, count a lot and will greatly make our work uh, easier. And why not? because there are actually many online learning games that you can get the students to, to play for you to be able to achieve the end of um, the objective of uh, making them understand certain lessons. So again, that's jamcampus.com slash best dash online dash teaching tools. So, as you can see, there are actually so many fantastic materials already available online to make our work easier and to make our objective of uh, making the students learn uh, more achievable. However, that's the next thing we need to say. Sure, there are many existing resources, but first, we have to make sure that they're open access. Otherwise, you are going to receive many emails, messages from your students asking you how to go about accessing those materials. And then this is the next tip I can give you. Give specific instructions. Chances are you will be asking your students to watch lectures available online and you are most likely going to ask them to watch certain videos, give specific instructions. For example, instead of just asking them to watch a one hour lecture by a professor so-and-so in YouTube, you can specify, be especially attentive to two minutes and 15 seconds to 15 minutes and 26 seconds of the video where the author or where the professor discusses this specific topic. Or, for example, when you tell them that you expect them to submit a certain paper, make your instructions so specific, you will not have to deal with uh, so many questions from your students. Or, for example, when suggesting various links to some resources, because sometimes there can be many available links, indicate the most important. Indicate what you personally would prefer that they start with. One of the challenges of online teaching is the fact that you are not there physically present at the time that you are delivering the lecture to your students. But in spite of that, 
there are ways by which we can get the students to be active. And so this is the next tip, provide interactive activities. Avoid purely one-way transmission of learning, which is to do lectures. For example, you can find websites like this that talk about must-have interactive learning sites for the digital classroom. In other words, the students can be pursuing knowledge actively, even if you are not there present, even if what you expect the students to do would be to do the lessons, modular lessons at their own pace. That website, for example, provides some of these sample interactive activities that you can make the students do. Ask for feedback. And the students can send you a message, email you, or send you a communication about uh, an assignment that you gave them. And then make it social. Instead of just, for example, telling the students, read and write an essay or reaction to a certain writing material, you can tell them, choose a partner or form a group of two or three of you working together and uh, one to discuss part one, another to discuss the second part of the reading material, and the third, the um, summary or to answer the questions that are provided. Invite the students to contribute. They may be able to make short videos themselves, taking the place of reporting, and then they themselves posting those reports for the other students to access and effectively it's like their way of um, listening to the report of their classmates their peers and then to evaluate the others doing peer evaluation and there are many websites that will offer you ideas on how to make your teaching interactive even online this is a fantastic website, for example, that gives you various ideas on how you can make the interaction really alive. Here's one way, early in the term, maybe about week number three, you can ask for informal feedback on, as far as you're concerned, how is the course going? Do you have any suggestions? What are the problems that you are encountering how can we work things out so that you will be successful in this semester, given the experience you've had so far in the first weeks of the semester? Here's the next tip. Set reasonable expectations. And that doesn't mean sacrificing standards, lowering your standards, lowering your expectations as far as achievement is concerned. But at the same time, be very conscious of the fact that really the truth is everyone is struggling, whether it be because of the internet connection, availability of resources, well, working from home, as you have already seen in these past months that you've been at it, is a very big challenge because while you are supposed to be working, you are at home and there are various challenges and chores waiting for you at home. Yung bang, habang alam mong nagtuturo ka dapat ng uh, lessons, nandyan pa rin ang mga gawaing bahay na inaasahang ikaw ang gagawa dahil nasa bahay ka. And that is a given thing. It's what everyone is facing. And this is the reason why they say Work from home while it saves you from travel time. It saves you from having to prepare for whatever meals you need to bring to your workplace. Well, at the same time, nandyan yung ikaw ang kailangang magsaing. Ikaw ang kailangang maglaba pa rin. Ikaw ang kailangang mag-ayos ng bahay dahil nasa bahay ka. So, 
Similarly, the students are also more or less in the same situation. That's the present reality. Na habang nasa bahay sila, dapat nag-aaral, ang mga magulang umaasa pa rin, natutulong pa rin sila sa gawaing bahay. You have seen it, we see it, it is the experience of everyone. And so, we need to factor that in. Your students at this point may not necessarily be 100% full-time students. Here's the next one. And it's a, an important tip to really get the students to be actively participating and pursuing learning, not just passively. Let the students take control. And how do you do that? Here's one way. Group them into support teams. Don't just make them work individually at all times. Sure, they will be doing certain work, certain tasks individually on their own, but it would be good to get them to be working with other members of the class in teams, in groups. In that way, before they even ask you questions, tell them that they should try to help each other they should try to get the question or the answers to their questions from their other group mates before they even email you or contact you or send you a message. In that way, you spare yourself of students continuously pestering you for help because even before they run to you, they have other group mates to run to. That's why you call them support teams, not just groups. In other words, you're really creating small support communities among your students so that uh, together with the help of others, they can actually pursue academic excellence. This will be a tremendous help to you as teachers or as leaders of the class. You effectively empower them when you group them into large groups, small groups, and then of course certain things will have to be done individually. And with that, they will have various experiences of uh, learning. Here's a very important tip. That's why I put it in big bold letters, my dear fellow teachers, it's okay to let your students know how you feel. How you feel about your fear, your apprehensions that your students may not actually be doing their part. You are giving them freedom to go at their own pace, to access the worksheets or the lessons on their own. You may not be there at all times to check on them if they're doing what they are supposed to do. And I know for some teachers, that's a big cause for concern. Let the students know that, that you are concerned, that you are not very certain that the students are actually doing their own part. And then, no problem with that, letting them know also how you feel about technology about how you are still grappling perhaps with the expert use of the various platforms that are given to them. It's okay. They will understand as you will also do your best to understand their situation. But it's important that you share those feelings. For all you know, your students will also be very considerate in helping you, facilitate things for you. In the end, what we want to do here is for you teachers to get the students to be on your side so that you work together in achieving academic excellence. You have to make them share your feelings so that in the end, they will do their best to work together with you. But don't doubt. Don't ever entertain doubts. 
you will be successful. This school year, in spite of the so-called new normal, in spite of the new setups, in spite of the fact that this is, this may be the first time you will be doing this after decades of uh, classroom teaching, don't worry. This will still be a successful school year for you and for them. We will get through this as you have gotten through revolutions, human tragedies, natural disasters. We've been through so many. We've been through a lot. This is just one of those that we will have to hurdle and we will get through this. Well, dear fellow teachers, I know how tough it is, how difficult it is, because effectively you and I had to relearn many things as we go through this new semester, as we go through this new school year. And that's why at the start of this presentation, I said, thank you. Thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for holding on. And let's keep on forging ahead in spite of the challenges. But the fact that you continue going the path that is um, not very easy is a clear sign that you have the vocation of a teacher. You do not just have an employment you have a vocation, a mission. And that's why we choose to continue teaching. This last video I'd like to share with you captures that message, not just uh, of hope, but especially of deep gratitude for all that you do for our young people. So, character more than ever. The young people continue to need us. The young people are looking for answers, not just answers to questions in math, science, history, and whatever subject you will be handling this year. The expression that we always used in the past is, you are not given a subject to teach. You are entrusted with young people, men and women, whom you are not just supposed to raise up to be smart, but especially good. Men and women of character who are going to lead the Philippines towards a brighter future. And you, my dear fellow teachers and non-teaching personnel of Holy Angel University, are in a position to be able to do a great deal of good work in that, preparing these young people to be the future leaders so that we look forward to a better future, better Philippines, and a better world. I can only wish you luck in this new school year. Forge ahead, courage, and move forward. We will be able to hurdle this one as we did many difficulties and challenges in the past. Giver of all wisdom and greatest of all teachers, look upon our teachers with love. Grant them the resolve to nurture our eager minds and to never give up on us who fall behind.
Bless their hearts, for they rejoice when we succeed, and encourage us when we fail. Endow them with gentle patience, for the path of learning is never easy. Kindle a spirit of passion in them. It is the flame that ignites the love of learning in us. Help them see the potential in each student. Their belief in us means much more than the grade we make. Instill in them a commitment to keep on learning. It shows us to not fear new knowledge and experiences. Inspire them to touch the future. They influence how big a dream we dream for ourselves. Bless our teachers who have come before, for their work endures to this day. Let the light of your example shine upon all teachers. To build up with their words, to love with their mind, to share with their heart. Amen.